So this is a case of focal pulse field ablation guided by contact and non-contact uh, mapping. And this is a case that was performed at Homoka Hospital in uh, Prague, the Czech Republic. As you'll see, there are a total of three operators that did this particular procedure. And this is part of a first in human series. Um, this is part of a trial called the PFACE trial. It's a all comer de novo AF trial. So both paroxysmal patients as well as persistent patients. The goal was PV isolation is the primary performance endpoint, uh, checking again 20 minutes post ablation to verify no reconnection. And additional lesion sets could be placed as, uh, as desired by the operators. The plan is a follow-up mapping study at 90 days as part of this protocol with clinical monitoring out to 12 months. And again, the data, well, all we're gonna show today is just the case because these were just done recently. And just a quick introduction to the technology. So the ablation catheter is as shown there. It's a gold tip standard catheter. It goes through an eight French sheath. And, <clears throat> and the mapping system can has the ability to perform either contact or non-contact mapping. So the contact mapping, which you see on the, le on the left, is that's an example in a case where we used a traditional circular mapping catheter and swept it around. And based on the electrical impedance um, localization, uh, the anatomy was created and then the voltage was annotated. On the right is a non-contact map. So the anatomy was generated using that, that basket catheter that you see inside. So as, as many of you are aware, that basket catheter is a specialized basket where in each of those nodes, there's an ultrasound crystal. So based on the distance and seen on these various um, ultrasound crystals, the anatomy of the left atrium is generated, and then far field electrical information can be projected onto it. So this is what the technology is able to do. And then hopefully uh, Peter will be here and he'll join us to show this particular case. Hi, Peter, we can see you. Hey, uh, uh, Musa and Vivek, actually, uh, I would like to show you uh, one of these cases, which uh, was uh, originally planned as a paroxysmal atrial fibrillation case. So the man was relatively young, like 44 years old man, with really very symptomatic, almost daily uh, current paroxysmal AFib episodes with very sensitive and very fatigue uh, during the episodes. Surprisingly, he was referred on the chat mask zero with rivaroxaban, but fine. I wouldn't like to comment that, uh, you can comment that later. And he was on propafenone, uh, which represents uh, 150 milligrams uh, twice a day. The ablation strategy we planned for this particular patient was PV isolation only because he was originally really paroxysmal, but actually as we've stated, we, uh, or it was allowed to us to get any other ablation and lines if indicated. So uh, actually I need to comment uh, what we did as a, as a, um, this, this uh, short introduction. So we really keep the timing of the procedure here and you will follow how long actually the procedure is because it's real time. And actually the fast sequences are not cut, but fast sequences are uh, like faster, like 20 times, okay. So, so we kept all this uh, movie together. So first of all, as Vivek stated, this patient was uh, done on the contact uh, mapping. So circle catheter moved around and you will see the first operator, as Vivek mentioned, uh, there were three operators, not me, uh, Honza Petru, uh, then Jacob Karut, and Vivek Reddy, uh, the last one, because others were tired. So actually, <laughs> this is uh, the first uh, sequence of the movie when map was created, which was really reasonable time you follow. We started like 9.23 uh, minutes, so actually the map is clearly nearly done. Uh, 28, so it's in five minutes, then validated actually a little bit smoother, and then the map is pretty much ready for the catheter ablation. So I will comment a bit the catheter itself and the catheter ablation. So the pulse field catheter, this is the force catheter. So actually the, the force uh, mapping 
is uh, based on single wire, not three wires, but one single optical wire with three elements on that. So it creates a contact force uh, information, which we know for uh, pulse field application is uh, somehow important. We don't need to get crazy contact, but we really probably need to know uh, that we are really in the contact. So uh, the, 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 the pulse here was uh, applied from the focal catheter, as I stated. So you see that catheter. And the pulses were three in the row, three pulses, uh, actually uh, synchronized by atrial pacing. So actually, by atrial pacing, it was synchronized by three consecutive uh, P waves. But if you have atrial fibrillation patient, which is a running atrial fibrillation, then surface EKG is used for uh, synchronization of the pulse based on the R waves. And then it's averaging the R waves. So actually, uh, it's uh, applied in three pulses uh, by average. When you really be afraid about the three pulses, for example, when you are closer to, to the ventricle, then we apply just one pulse. I will show you later then. OK, so now um, the guys are ready for the first application, the positioning is uh, um, uh, be ready for the left-sided uh, uh, left-sided uh, veins, and actually you can appreciate here uh, the the force uh, the force measurement uh, when catheter is applied. So actually, I will skip a bit and I will <clears throat> I will go for the first very first application. Uh, hopefully we will be able to see this, this uh, the EKG then magnifies. Uh, is still their positioning. Actually, you need to understand that what we had mentioned, there are the very first first in man uh, procedure. So we really was not too much familiar with the technology, but actually, uh, actually based on the map was really really nice feeling about the movement, about the application. So now we are really applying. So like you can see one, two, three pulses. Actually, uh, uh, sometimes we can see the same effect as uh, Atul uh, mentioned in previous cases, uh, when the cutter is going away from the map and backward. But actually in that time, uh, I mean, the recording is uh, 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 switch off. So automatically, so we are not losing the imagination of position. You may uh, notice Peter. that after the first application yeah. from the sinus, it uh, started uh, started atrial tachycardia or some maybe less organized uh, less organized tachycardia, maybe atrial fibrillation. So we continue with the three pulses then. Uh, so Peter, in sorry, to interrupt. Just um, Atul just has a yes. question. Got one second. Yeah, uh, Peter, uh, mm -hmm. I, I just had a question about the the, the contact force. Is this an optical based force or it's is optical. it a I spring? I mentioned this optical, like like endosense. I mean, okay. like tacticat, but there are not three wires uh, because it's a little bit uh, maybe stiffer. The, this cutter is not so stiff in the, in the very end, That's while right. they use only one optical wire. Okay. okay. And and okay. um, and are there different doses available, or is it always like Actually, these three not packets? Yet, but I mentioned only that we can use a, re a reduction of the pulses, so we can use a number of pulses, but we cannot play with the energy. Uh, yes, sir. If it's open, I think this open uh, information, this biphasic, bipolar, and the dosing is. 1750, I guess, uh, volts uh, per, per, uh, yeah. per cylinder. Yeah, so, the, so, so again, this is dedicated so, uh, power, uh, this is dedicated uh, volume. Okay. So, sorry, so, Peter, uh, that, sorry, let me, you can just keep playing. I just want to make a comment. So, the standard okay. dosing is the three pulses. Yeah. And then the, the time would go to one pulse, as Peter uh, started to mention, was when you get toward the ventricle, there was concern about ventricular stimulation activation and you know refractory period whatever so potential uh, so induction then, of the vf right yeah, yeah so then it was just one pulse the other thing you notice um and you probably noticed it with the first lesion that the tachycardia started as peter said and i've seen this with every pf technology is some degree of activation of the atrium so you do get some um and it's an issue right so we like to see sometimes tachycardias terminate 
with the with our <laughs> ablation lesion. But if yeah. you have an organized tachycardia, yeah. the termination may not be related to ablation of the tissue, but rather just you know a rightly placed extra stimulus. Just anyway, just out of, sure, can just I, out of can curiosity I just comment? on that point, okay. Vivek, uh, just out of curiosity mm -hmm. on the stimulation issue. Do you find that when it's stimulated, it persists, or do you find that it's sort of like non-sustained? Because uh, yeah, yeah, that's no. kind of interesting. Because I've I, I've noticed the same thing as you, but I've noticed yeah. that they're usually not sustained for right. the whole case. Right. No, I think that's exactly right. I think it's only during the stimulation that you yeah. get extra pulses. Now, as you know, AFib may or may not Atul, you know, continue can after. I answer? So, Atul, can I comment? Yes. So you are perfectly right because this case was different. This case, since the first application, the atrial tachycardia started to run and it was not finished till we put some lesions, more lesions than uh, yeah. the PVI. So I will show later. So I need to continue. Uh, yeah, Musa please. will be nervous. Yeah, so so uh, uh, we are continuing with, with the uh, left sided. And actually, when we are going slower, you will see even we are not finishing the circle. With, usually, we, we can see that the effect. Right now, when slowing down, focus on the Pruka. So after that application, it's hopefully coming soon. Again, three pulses, one, two, three. I say the, the, the veins were isolated. So actually, even without finishing, the circle was isolated. Okay, so you can, I actually, yes. it's not so frequent uh, fashion, but sometimes we can see that, okay? Yeah. So we will yeah, run I, the movie again. Yeah, keep going, Peter. I just want to just emphasize your point, though, that in this case, mm -hmm. you're right, that th this patient had continuous tachycardia, but this patient, as you will see, has a re-entered tachycardia that we okay. dealt with later. Okay. And actually, uh, well, we our, our strategy is, despite we have isolation, we really like to finish the circle. So actually when Honza, the first operator was tired, so the right-sided, uh, uh, Jacob continued the, the right-sided, very nice fashion. And hopefully we'll be ready soon. So now we are running like less than, less than one hour procedure. <laughs> and look at that. Now the right, even the right side is isolated. But what we noticed, after right side isolation, the tachycardial sequence really changed and really stabilized for so like so very suspicious for a mitral mitral flutter. So so uh, actually veins were finished, and we as we like mentioned, this is part of study. So we still need to wait twenty minutes for validation of the isolation. But while we were waiting, so we started to to guess what we can do with this atrial tachycardia. So should we study to, to get entrainments from left atrium? And actually Vivek was not happy with that. So actually he started to be um, working. So now Vivek is mapping and using the uh, yeah, I mean, entrainments. So, yeah, I mean, so and just... Just let me just comment on that, Peter. So I typically in these kind of things, when you suspect mitral flutter, my strategy is typically, you know, check the mitral, the, the posterior isthmus, check anteriorly, and if both are in, then then they're in. So at that mm -hmm. point, and you went through that very quickly, but the but it, it was in. So the entrainment, the PPI did equal tachycardia cycle length at the posterior mitral isthmus region and anteriorly. And actually, when, when uh, I uh, really want to comment again the same position was when yesterday Vivek mentioned his position of the catheter for the mitral isthmus ablation is uh, very similar as yesterday, right? So so he's very he's very uh, stable in that meanings. So the catheter position is stable there, and where we are or where we were close to the mitral uh, annulus. So the very first applications were started to be the single pulse. Okay, then we continued the other part of the line uh, with the three pulses. But you will see that in the really fast, again, fast uh, fashion. So uh, Vivek will start and is ready to, so about to start with applications. Uh, still, still trying to get the entrainment, and it's sure it's clear that it's. Uh, the mitral, mitral isthmus dependent flutter. 
he's mute, so actually he's coming. I can make him a little bit like louder, but I don't think so. It's important now. And so we apply the line. Actually, now you can see again, started like uh, one pulse, and now we are going to get three pulses again when we are very, very far away from, from, uh, from uh, mitral, mitral valve. And Arnold's, and actually, uh, sometimes you can appreciate it. You can see this uh, formation of the microbubbles as uh, probably all the pulse field technology creates, more or less. And so he is nearly finished with the mitral valve isthmus. I will make it a little bit, I move it a bit. Because now it was clear that uh, the sequence of the tachycardia really changed. So after the mitral, uh, after mitral isthmus line, the tachycardia sequence is changed. And actually, we started again with some entrainments. And I will a little bit speed up. And we notice that from all these positions and even from the roof, which is here, is uh, the PPI was very, very uh, bad, so very long. So, so we really uh, proved that it's not mitral uh, isthmus dependent atrial tachycardia. So we moved the catheter from the left atrium to the right uh, side and try to get entrainments from here. CTS. Uh, so now, uh, despite <laughs> his very good comment, this is CT, uh, it's most uh, dependent flutter, but actually as Vivek likes to get the um, uh, coronary sinus and Atul very nicely commented uh, earlier, uh, I mean the application, pulse fit application from CS. So, so actually it's, we hope that it's not causing any damage to the even vein, even just arteries. So, so Peter, um, sorry, you went through this quickly. Let me just yeah. uh, just uh, just to clarify. So, um, the PPIs, as Peter said, in the left atrium were all out after that mitral line. Yes. Mm -hmm. Coming to the right side, the PPI from the CT isthmus was in. So that was a typical flutter. But because I always, you know, I never trust any lines. I went into the CS anyway to put in a lesion in the coronary sinus adjacent to the mitral line. During that application, the flutter terminated, but that was not because it terminated, the, I mean, just because probably stimulation terminated it. Right. But anyway, so sorry, go ahead, Peter. Mm -hmm. But you know, Vivek, you are right, because you know, you will see uh, very, very soon that the flutter will continue after some kind of pacing and then uh, it stopped. And actually then we started to, to, to use just only just only uh, the single pulse. So there we're pacing okay. just to show reversal of activation, right? Mm -hmm. what, what do we, yeah, they're yeah. pacing the CS and showing yes. that the prox- pacing here. Yeah, and then if you look yeah, at the ablation electrogram. Really, really prove that uh, the mitral uh, isthmus is blocked, but single pulse, look at that. So in, in the CS, we use really single pulse application, which is um, from the safety reason. And then after this, we uh, finished that and we started to continue on, on the real ISMO CTI. So we went to the CTI and I can comment a little bit more uh, the one uh, aspect of this focal ablation is a pulse field. The system indicates the distance, okay? It's very, very helpful. Because we know, as again, Atul, I need to cite Atul a lot. So, so uh, actually, he mentioned that the, for pass field, like uh, classics, like four millimeters, five millimeters, um, um, I mean, uh, lesion. So, uh, actually, we, we really titrate this distance to be not far than eight millimeters. Okay. So, we found this really very helpful for the system, so actually we really uh, drive the ablation by this uh, information. And Peter, so can, now, I ask a, can I ask a question yes. about the application in the coronary sinus? So you said that you only used one pulse train, like kind of a gentler dose in the coronary sinus. And was that kind of like how I was using a gentler dose on the posterior wall? Like in theory, in theory, the, the, the CS should be 
resistant to any kind of stenosis or anything. Yeah, it, yes, but it wasn't for a safety you know what? reason. I, I will so, tell you until uh, probably the next time we will go live with this acutus, uh, the pass field case, the focal pass field case, we will apply more in yeah, the CS. But, but just, so let me just clarify one thing. So again, I told the reason we did that there was not for safety concern about the CS per se. It was more because you know, with the first pulse, you can time to the ventricle, right? With the additional pulses, you know, depending it's, on it's, what's it's going on. So it's more about timing. So a gating issue. It's more a gating issue. Okay, That's right. All right. Okay. And again, I should say, I mean, how important is the gating issue? I don't know. It's somewhat of a theoretical concern, yeah. but it, it can happen. So, yeah. I but think, okay, uh, but I think a lot it's, of it's perfectly fine because the, gating, by, by pacing, but... you can increase and the speed, so you can speed up the procedure. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I was just right. going to say something. Sorry? Yeah, no, oh, I, I, I think the systems, a lot of them have gone with gating exactly over these theoretical uh, concerns, but but you're right. I mean, uh, you know, yeah. it, how much of it is theoretical? We, we certainly did a bit of preclinical work where we did ungated lesions and we were actually mm -hmm. right by the mitral valve with the intent mm -hmm. of trying to get the field to penetrate. And it was it was pretty hard to yeah. and and as you know porcine model they tend to vf all the at time at a moment's yeah. notice and it was actually right. pretty difficult to get it to do it so yeah and with the commercial um pentaspline catheter the fairpal system um you know it's, we start off gated and then we just became ungated very quickly and now yeah. i don't think anybody gates so Anyway, hi Peter. Go ahead. Can I show you? It's, it's the same observation from uh, from the animals because uh, even porcine is very sensitive to anything. And actually, I haven't seen too much uh, uh, in the preclinical studies with uh, with these pigs. Uh, not too much uh, ventricular fibrillation. So now uh, we may continue with with the CTI isthmus line, which is finished. Uh, uh, and after that we started to map uh, the activation map of the atrium. So we went back to uh, left atrium and by circle mapping, uh, circle catheter mapping, we um, get the activation information and we even prove the mitral line is blocked and here. And then we add the voltage map. Actually, I think this is the same voltage map Vivek showed in the beginning. So uh -huh. this is this uh, the, the guy. And actually, you can see even here on the mitral isthmus, very nice, very nice, uh, I mean, block and actually re reduction of, uh, of, of the voltages. So this is uh, this is one, one example of what we did. Actually, even we plan originally the paroxysmal, I mean, atrial fibrillation just only PVI and we continue with very, very complex uh, fashion. So after all, it was like 108 minutes procedure time, but actually look at that. So by this very nice uh, option for, for the mapping. So we were really able to minimize the floral time for eight minutes only. Total mapping time was 18 minutes, but more or less more important is like we applied uh, 127 BFA applications, which represents, you know, by one second. So it's like you can calculate like two, three uh, minutes uh, only, uh, or two minutes only, sorry. And and uh, here is the dwelling time uh, we spent in the left atrium and the mitral line and uh, then uh, for CTI. So actually speaking about do I have a time? Oh, six minutes. Yeah, you still so have six I have minutes, more Peter. Time. Perfect. Very nice. So actually, um, I will when I when I mention this this um, this distance and I will I mean the lesion diameter like four seconds and uh, uh, the calculation. So the system, but it's not the study. Uh, it's not a part of the study. I, I but I I'm I'm have permission from the company to show. So. So uh, uh, based on that, we we uh, in the other patient we used, but we were blinded. Okay, we were blinded. So we try to visualize, or they try to visualize, the lesion formation, the pass field uh, uh, formation on the map, on their map, because so the, this electric field 
could be displayed or the question if it's uh, helpful for us to visualize this field on, on, on the map. So there's a field tagging you will see on this kind of map. This map is the other patient, it's really paroxysmal patient, and I should look at that, it's running again, atrial fibrillation. Uh, so uh, in that case, we use non-contact mapping, okay, by this 48 um, segment, uh, the, the circle, uh, this basket catheter, Acunaf, uh, oh, um, uh, this uh, yeah, uh, Acumap uh, Q -map catheter, and, and uh, uh, actually, uh, we were blinded, as I told you, we were blinded, but actually, they tried to visualize the field by tagging on the map. So, so let me, but, sorry, Peter, let me just yes. clarify one part. So, so here, here you, you can see in the circle, uh, the, a little bit of a gap, okay? Uh, you, can, you can add something? Right? Yeah, no, I was just I gonna, also. I just wanted to clarify one thing for the audience. So mm -hmm. the, the, but, but what this basically represents is, one knows what the field should look like around the catheter. So based on the location of the catheter and the orientation of the catheter relative to the surface, that field is basically being projected onto the onto the map. So that red you know, splotchy stuff around represents, you could think of the field that was ultimately created, uh, stitching all of these things together. And as Peter, I think is about to show, after going around, this map it, it suggested that there's a gap at that location, okay? So go can ahead, I, Peter. Can I ask a but question? Actually, I will continue, but actually, the, the, well, it's very important that it's uh, like the not, um, I mean, it's not a feature we studied, okay? We yeah. are really blinded and we were not driven by this information. Yeah, so, it's important. right. So the, we after, so after going around in this particular case, we did not have one first pass isolation on this side. So going back, we said, okay, this Here. is where the gap probably is. And it turned out, retrospectively that that coincided with an area that the that the field map suggested would have been a gap. So sorry, you're gonna ask yeah. a question until? Yeah, I was just gonna ask a question about, so you said it's a bipolar delivery. So it's delivering from the tip of the catheter to a proximal right. element, right? right. Uh, two questions. One is what's the distance between those two elements? And yeah, it's about what you saw. I mean, it's basically between the electrodes the, the tip so and like the, maybe three, three yeah, meters three, or yeah, something, something like that. that. Yeah. And then the other thing is, does that mean that the catheter, the tip and the proximal element has to be touching the tissue oh, versus, no, no. No, 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 versus because, just the no, tip? No. Yeah, no, no, it, they don't have to be touching, but ideally it would be parallel, right? So if you're, if you're perpendicular to the tissue, if you're normal to the tissue, you're still gonna get a feel, but the size of the field that interacts with the tissue will be smaller, much smaller. Than, if you're, than, yeah, than if you're parallel. Exactly. So, That's right. so, you know, for the optimal delivery, especially when you're looking at those splotches, right? I mean, would you want to try and keep the catheter parallel to the tissue as much as possible? Yeah, I think that's a very good point. In fact, um, so I, we didn't show the case here. There are some cases where we did roof lines. And we're very careful to try to keep it as parallel as you can. Now, obviously, there's certain locations it's hard to do that. And so you just deal with it. But one potential advantage of the field map is by knowing where the field was created, you could take that information and use that information as opposed to the simple red dots that we normally create. All right. So Peter, I'm sorry, we, we, you have about a minute like, and 35 seconds left, please. Okay, so I can I can comment that because you know, it's Atul is in the panel. So actually I know that he's uh, not in favor of uh, the sheeting, just like uh, manipulating by, by deflectible sheets, but uh, <laughs> Uh, with this, with this uh, catheter, uh, because of that issue, uh, you should be really far away with uh, in uh, with the catheter outside of the sheet. So actually, uh, as I'm sheet guy, so I'm I'm trying to manipulate with the sheet itself, not with the catheter. So for this manipulation, I really use much more uh, deflection itself, uh, much more deflection of the catheter itself, uh, rather than she sheeting. All right, it's my only comment. Peter, thank you very much for this nice case. Thanks, Peter.